Ukraine's government is telling people to stay calm and united, and it also warns the country is almost fully surrounded by hostile forces. CBS's Imtayas Tayeb was there. Good evening. Well, this growing threat of a Russian-led invasion has seen Ukrainians take to the streets here in the capital calling for peace. In the heart of Kyiv, the largest demonstration opposing war since these tensions began. They're demanding Vladimir Putin keep his hands off Ukraine. After Western governments issued frantic warnings the Russian president could launch an attack any day now. But not everyone here is so convinced. Of course I'm worried, but am I afraid? Uh, not. No, I don't think so. Ukraine's leader, Vladimir Zelensky, agrees. The best friend for enemies that is panic in our country. And all this information that helps only for panic doesn't help us. But with Russian warships already in the Black Sea and these enormous live-fire military drills in neighboring Belarus, the global panic is fueled by the fear an all-out war here could kill tens of thousands and destabilize Europe. On Ukraine's northern frontier, these border forces patrol the narrow sliver of territory separating Ukraine and Belarus. The commander in charge is Margarita Varishnina. What is your plan if something does happen? She says, we can't reveal our plan because it's secret, but with the military, we will keep this border safe. Now, defending against a Russian invasion, however likely, would be a tough task for Ukrainian forces. Tonight, international pressure mounts on Vladimir Putin not to strike. About this uh, yesterday, the forecast actually in Ukraine and Russia right now is actually very quiet. And so there's the potential there for, if something were to happen, for the weather to cooperate. Yeah, I know that, that intelligence reports that came out yeah. talked about through Wednesday they thought it might right. happen. And I think the weather may be a reason for that here, Jack. Right. Right now, it's pretty quiet over in Ukraine. There's Russia. There's Ukraine. Of course, we're looking Eastern Europe, Western Asia here. Uh, Crimea sits down here. Belarus is right there. So this high pressure, big Siberian high pressure, is sitting over the area. It's keeping these systems away from the area. Uh, but as we move here through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eventually that's going to change. And as that happens, by Wednesday onward, we'll have some unsettled weather swing on in here. And it will stay unsettled from Wednesday onward uh, with a change in pattern here. So through Wednesday is really a unique window of opportunity given that high pressure. Correct, yeah. And so it's interesting to think weather-wise what role that might play. Something else to think about, Jack. I've got a word for you to say here. Rasputisa. Because I was thinking, like, they said Rasputin, but it's like, no, Rasputisa. Rasputisa. Okay. Just saying it a little angry, and it sounds like it's Russian. Yeah. Rasputisa. Uh, that is a term that's used in Ukraine and Belarus and Russia area. What happens is when this thaw happens in the spring, you know, you get the spring rains, the ice and snow melts, the ground becomes very muddy over there. Correct. It's a very agricultural yep. area. Yep. And what happens is that it's very difficult to travel. That happens generally. You know, late February, you start thinking about it's usually a March event here. And so if there's tanks and things like that, you've got to wonder, would the mud impact that particular plans that may or may not be happening over Russia? Of course, we don't really know what's going on. Right. We're just meteorologists. Right. Well, Ukraine is known as the breadbasket of the yeah. former Soviet Union. So it's very agricultural. It's pretty flat there, too. So um, it's obviously got uh, some importance. And, uh, you know, the Olympics, usually you can't do anything conflict-wise in the Olympics. But since Russians are... Not really Russians, they're the ROC. Yeah, the Russian Olympic Committee. Yeah, but we're just, we're just forecasting the weather. We can't really forecast war. So <laughs> that's, yeah, you're so, right. But, you know. But the, the high pressure does at least make sense from a tactical standpoint. From a tactical standpoint, you, know, you think of D Day. Yep. They hid that. behind the fog and came on in. Yep. Uh, the Spanish Armada was sank by a strong wind when they were trying to attack. Uh, you know, weather has changed history. It has, yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see will this narrow window of opportunity through Wednesday be what they're looking for? Or if they try and go in March, what happens with the muddy ground? Does that right. slow them down? I'm right. sure they're thinking about this yeah. over there. Yeah. But we are too, and it's kind of Correct. Yeah. a change in pace it is. Yeah. from the local weather here. So uh, locally here, Jack, I will mention real quick.